personal finance practice problem using Excel. Coupon rate and current yield calculations. Prepared to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs. We've got the example tab, practice tab, blank tab, example tab, in essence, the answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're going to be calculating the coupon rate, the current yield rate, noting that these different rates, although typically fairly easy to calculate, can be a little confusing in terms of the terminology and keeping them all straight. So we'll practice that as we go through the calculations. The practice tab has some pre-formatted cells on the right-hand side, so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, we're going to be practicing the Excel formatting with the information on the left. If you don't have access to this, you can open up a blank Excel worksheet. I would lay down, throw down the baseline format selecting the entire sheet possibly with the triangle up top right click on that sheet if it were a blank sheet format the sheet and then go to the number category I usually sit down or lay out or start off with the currency brackets no dollar sign no decimals I'm not gonna hit OK but rather just X out of it because I've already got the sheet set up and then Enter the data on the left hand side adjusting any cells as needed make it a skinny C column and then we're ready to go now we've got the calculations down below for the coupon rate and the current yield obviously you don't need those to work through the practice problem but those are just for reference so we're going to say that we have a bond bond number one the face value is going to be one thousand dollars we're going to assume it's a semi-annual interest or a coupon of fifty dollars and it's issued at the face value so we're going to assume that it was issued you know basically uh at after right after it was created so it was issued at face value and then the second bond we're going to say the face value is one thousand dollars semi-annual interest meaning it's going to be paying out semi-annual the interest is in essence you can think of kind of like the rent on the money that we are loaning to say a corporation or to the government in terms of us purchasing the bond we're going to get our money back at the end in a similar way as we might get like a rental property back at the end of renting it and we're going to get the rental payments on it which we're going to call interest here rather than getting them every month we're going to be getting them every six months in essence that being different than when we borrow money say for a mortgage where we structure the mortgage in the format of us paying it back with equal installments having a component of both interest and principal so then we've got the price we're going to say is 950 which means we're going to be purchasing this one at a discount because it's less than the face value okay so if we're going to say the coupon the coupon rate is simply going to be the rate of um of the payment we usually think of it as we're going to think of it as an annual coupon rate even though they're paying out on a semi-annual basis so we're going to get then a thousand i mean a hundred dollars at the end of the year fifty dollars every six months so if we want to calculate it then we're going to say that we've got we'll call it bond one coupon rate and yield let's do the coupon rate and the yield which will in essence be the same because we issued it at the face amount uh not at a discount or premium I'm going to make this one a little bit wider. Let's make this a little bit wider. And so I'm going to make it black and white for the header, selecting the header home tab. We're going to go to the font group. Let's hit the bucket drop down and make it black and white. Okay, so we're going to have the annual interest payment. So we're doing this on an annual basis. And so we're getting paid $50 semi-annual. So it's going to be $100 annual, or we can just take, of course, $50 times two, and that would give us the $100. The face value, the amount that would be on the bond that we're going to get at maturity is going to be $1,000. So that's going to be equal to $1,000. And when they issue the bond, then they may be able to issue it for the appropriate market rate at that point in time. If you're buying the bond on the secondary market, it's much more likely that you're going to have to purchase it at a premium or a discount, right? So we're going to assume that they issued it for the current market rate. Therefore, they're going to be receiving the corporation or the government the $1,000 for it. So 
That's why we're going to be calculating both the coupon rate and the yield. Not the yield, the yield, I, E, L, D. My fingers never want to type that yield right. So we've got the coupon rate and the yield in this current case, which is going to be equal to the $100 divided by the 1000. And now we've got to recognize, in order to recognize, we've got to percentify because that's a percent home tab. You could add decimals to recognize it, but we're going to make it a percent, 10%. So clearly we have the 10% coupon rate. Now, obviously if a book problem or someone gives you the coupon rate, then you can calculate what the payments will be, but you need to determine or be clear that the coupon rate might be an annual coupon rate and then determine whether or not you're going to be being paid on a semi-annual or annual basis. So if this is the coupon rate, annual coupon rate, and you're getting paid semi-annual, then you would take the face amount times the coupon rate divided by two, and that would give you your $50. So you might, in, in a book problem, you might see it either way, or you might see people talking about it either way, possibly either giving you the coupon rate or the amounts of payments. You gotta keep in mind how often those payments will take place typically semi-annual or annual or kind of a common uh, common payment methods for the bond structure. So let's go ahead and make this blue and bordered home tab font group. I'm going to hit the bucket drop down that blue right there. If you don't have it, you can go to the more colors. We're in the standard area on the wheel. That's the one. That's the one we want. I'm going to put some brackets around this font group drop down all borders or borders around it. Let's put an underline right here while we're at it underline that's the line underneath which we for some reason called an underline home tab let's do a format painter to make a skinny f skinny f here we go you skinny little f column so now we're going to say this is now let's say we have bond two we have coupon rate coupon rate which is going to be different this time than the the current yield because we're going to assume this time that we sold it not for the face amount that will often happen when it's sold on the secondary market which is where a lot of people will end up buying you know the bonds oftentimes and and so we're gonna have a difference here so it's not bond not like bon jovi or, or anything bond bond so i'm gonna then select these two let's put that former formatting on the header home tab font group drop down black and white. And so this is gonna be the annual interest payment. I'm just gonna say equals this one cause it's the same. And I'm gonna say this equals, it's still the same. It's gonna be $50, but this 50 really, this 50 times two. So we're getting $100. The face amount is still the 1000. So we're not using the 950 here. We still got the 1000, even though we're going to pay 950. We're paying for a discount for it, but we're still going to get the 1000 back at the end. We're still going to use the 1000 to basically calculate the coupon or to calculate the coupon rate. So this is going to be the coupon, coupon rate, which is the same, but it's now not the yield rate, right? So it's just a coupon rate this time. 100 divided by 1000. Let's uh, put some uh, percentify numbers, percentify, put an underline here, underline, and we'll do the blue and border, bordered blue. But now we have a difference between that and let's say bond number two, current yield, current yield. I'm going to select these two, make this a header again, font group. Let's go to the bucket, make that black and white. So now we're going to have the annual interest payments, which I can just, let's just pick that up from what we did up top. Annual interest payments is the same up top. Let's make this column a little bit wider so we could see the whole thing. You could probably just get, I know what the end of it is. I don't even need to see it, but it looks that you should be able to see it. And then we're gonna we're gonna take that and compare it to the price instead of to the face value. So we're comparing it to the price this time of the 950. That's how much we're gonna pay for it, not how much we're gonna get at maturity. Those two things no longer being the same because it was issued at a discount. So then we have the current yield is gonna be equal to, now we're gonna get the $100 and we're gonna compare that to what we are paying for it divided by the 950 
And that'll give us, if we go up top, number group, percentify, add some decimals, and we're at the 10.53 about. So this is this is one kind of a fairly quick method that we can kind of do some uh, do some comparisons and and look at our current yield to see what we're receiving in comparison with the price. Now that's a kind of a simplified method to do some comparisons because it's because the the bonds are a little bit more complicated than that. Not taking into consideration time value of money or the full stream of the bond payments. We're just taking a look at the one return, the one interest payment or rent payment kind of compared to the bond price but that can give us some comparisons or some ideas obviously you can see here the current yield is higher than the coupon rate because we purchased it at a discount if we were to change the price to once again if i change this second one to the same number the 1000 then we would have the same issue price as with or purchase price as with the face value and we get the 10 percent in both cases or if we put this higher we purchase it at a premium say this was 1500 so now we've got the current yield because we paid more for it at the 6.67 percent let's bring it back to where it was bring it on back where was it i don't even know where it was i'm just going to undo so 950 that's where it was let's make this blue and bordered blue and bordered home tab font group brackets and we'll make that bordered so just some terms to keep in mind here. We've got the coupon rate, which is typically the, the kind of on the bond in some way or another, or implied or given in the fact that you've got the semi-annual payment of $50 and the face value allowing you to ca calculate the coupon rate, which, was, which will often be calculated on an annual basis, even though it's paid out semi-annual. Uh, and then we, of course, got the face amount of the bond, which is different than the price that we pay for the bond or may be different, especially if you didn't purchase it from directly the company or the government. And then we've got the price of the bond calculation. That's how much we actually paid uh, for the bond. Then we've got the current yield, which is kind of comparing what we are earning typically on an annual basis, because when we're comparing to other investments, we typically want to get our comparisons on an annual basis. So we're taking the annual interest divided by, by the price that we paid for it. And then we'll also have that term we looked at in the past when we thought about the market rate in order for us to kind of calculate the actual price, the, the rate that would be used in order for us to determine, you know, what the price is. So we might talk a little bit more about those rates, uh, those different terms in the future. Once you got uh, like an idea of these different terms, then it becomes a lot easier to kind of kind of calculate the price of the bond or think of the bond in ter terms of future cash flows but uh it can at the beginning it can be a little confusing to think about how people are you know especially you have different terminology sometimes for the coupon rates and the current yield and the market rate and the price or face value versus the price and so on